Hi, I'm Carol Grape. I'm here to give you some updated information on what we're going to be doing for our menstrual pads going forward. Tiffany came back with some great information to make our pads better, so please follow these instructions. The toppers can be either cotton woven, flannel, or fleece. We ask that the fabric be either dark and patterned or bright and patterned so they don't show stains. Please don't use any light colors or plain colors as they show stains quite a bit. For the middle layer, we are only going to be using Zorb, which is a special material spelled Z-O-R-B. We are only going to be doing medium weight pads and heavy weight pads. A medium weight pad will take one piece of Zorb. A heavy weight pad will take two. You will now notice on the website that we have the sizes of the pads listed, so you can use any template size you wish to make. For the waterproof layer, we are now only going to be using PUL, polyurethane laminate, and um, some of it is plain, some of it is patterned, but it has a shiny side and a dull side, and the shiny side is what keeps the moisture away from the panties. Please put the shiny side of the PUL inside the pad, no matter which side the pattern is on. We are now using two snaps per pad. Just in case one of them fails, they'll have a backup snap. Also, you do not have to place the snaps on the pads. They can be sent directly to Ch Crafting Change Headquarters and the snaps will be put on there. If you do have a cam snap machine and you wish to do that, I have also made a second video on how to do the snaps on the pads. So let's watch Deb Evans show us how to sew these pads. So to make the sanitary pad, we have one piece of cotton, one piece of PUL, which is matte on one side and shiny on the other. That's the waterproof fabric. And inside the pad is a fabric called Zorb, Z-O-R-B, and it's very absorbent. That's going to be the wicking fabric that absorbs the moisture. So this is for a heavy flow pad, so there's two layers of Zorb. In a medium pad, I believe there's one layer. Of I want to sew these two layers of Zorb together so that they don't slip around and move. So I'm going to pin through both layers and pin through both layers. And I'm just going to stitch around here an eighth of an inch around, all the way around the edge to help hold it in place. If you have a surging overlock machine, you may use that as well. If you don't, this is another way to do it. And I'm putting pressure on my left hand, holding it down and making it go in a circle. I'm using a number 14 needle and the stitch is number three, which is number four would be a gathering stitch. So this is kind of a, a looser stitch. And I just go all the way around. Clip your threads off. Now I take the cotton fabric Put the right side, which will be your brightest print side, down and center this reasonably. You don't have to get crazy with it. Just make sure it looks like you've got space all the way around. And then I go ahead and pin that just like I did all the way through both layers. I put it back under the machine. And I'm going to do that same 1 8 inch stitch. And that is going to hold the Zorb in place on the sanitary pad. And on this one, I'll do a back stitch where I didn't when I applied the Zorb because I know I'm going to stitch over it again anyway. And you'll notice that I 
I used a thread color that's on the darker side. It doesn't have to match exactly. In fact, you probably don't want it to, but I caution against using white as that this is the part that is going to be laying against their body. And you don't want that white thread to show blood stains and, and start to look yucky. So I used a darker color that kind of coordinates with the pad. I've got that part finished. I go to my Zorb and one side is very shiny and one side is not so shiny. Put the two right sides together. So the shiny side will be facing out and the Zorb will be facing out. Line this up as best you can. If you have an excellent cutter like I do, they will be perfection. And I just use little clips. You don't want to use pins if you can help it because that will perforate the PUL and make it leak. Okay, now I'm ready to put these two layers together. I'm going to use a 3 8 inch seam all the way around. Oops. And I put two over here because that shows me where my opening is going to be. I'm actually going to stitch from about here. I'm going to leave that much open so that I can turn this whole thing inside out. So that's my 3 8 inch mark. I'm going to stitch down and back stitch. Lift up your press of it, turn it. And just gently, if it doesn't turn easily, lift up your press of it and move the fabric. I do have a walking foot on this machine. It's a FOF, so it has its own walking foot, which is making the process a lot easier because it feeds the fabric top and bottom at the same ratio. But it is possible to do it without that walking foot. Now I've stitched all the way around the edge. You can see the opening that I left to turn the pad inside out. Now you take some little scissors. I like these spring loaded thing. And you're just gonna trim off the corners, making sure that you don't cut that stitching. But this is to reduce some of the bulk in the corners. Then I, and I'm cutting with the PUL side up because it makes it a little easier for me to see rather than cutting on a pattern. But some of the PUL will be printed and have a pattern on it. So do whatever works for you. And in this curve, I'm making four or five little snips. So when we turn it inside out, it'll lay nice and smooth kind of a sixteenth of an inch away from that stitching. You don't want to cut that stitching thread. Now I take my pinking shears and the big curve part, just pink it and cut it down to about a quarter or a little tiny bit less. And that'll reduce the bulk and help it lay nice when you turn it inside out. Now my fingers would have a hard time going into that position. So I use these, you can use tweezers. I have these little surgical clamps that I got at the fabric store. And I go in, grab that pad and pull it just to the point where I can get my fingers on it. And coax it all out through that opening. Just keep going round and round until it wants to push out. Okay. Pull it out. 
pull it out as best you can. Then I take my bodkin. I like this one because it has a rounded edge, which helps me turn that rounded corner and one pointed edge. Just stick it in that opening. Gently but firmly poke those corners out. You don't want to go through the corners and break that stitching. And then do the same to the other. It's going to be a very short little section because this is the, the side that you pulled all the fabric through. Just to stick it out like that. Now I take the rounded side and I just run it around the edge there and poke that out. You want a nice rounded edge, not a bunch of peaks. Opening is over here. Just kind of hold it shut. And on the cotton side, I am um, going to stitch all the way around a top stitch an eighth of an inch away from the edge. And that will hold everything in place. This is my third hand. Okay, stitch all the way around with that one eighth inch top stitching until you get back to where you started. And do a little top stitch. And you are done. Trim off your threads. Neatness counts. And it's ready to, to apply snaps. And there will be two on the corner.